Now we'll discuss the rights of the wife in Islam. Most of the other religions besides Islam, they consider the woman as an instrument of the devil. But the Quran refers to the woman as a muhsana. Muhsana in Arabic means a fortress against the devil. Because a pious woman who's on the straight path, she prevents the husband from deviating and going on the wrong track and keeps him on the Sirat al Mustaqeen. Therefore, she's called as Muhsana, a fortress against the devil. The Quran in Surah Nisa, chapter number four, verse number 21, refers to marriage, to nikah, as a sacred covenant. It's a sacred covenant, a sacred contract between the husband and wife. The Quran says in Surah Rum, chapter number 30, verse number 21, that we have created for you mates from amongst yourselves so that you may live with them in tranquility. And he has put love and mercy between your hearts. The beloved Prophet Muhammad he said, it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number seven, in the book of Nikah, chapter number three, Hadith number 5066, the beloved prophet said, O oh, young people, whoever has the means to get married should get married. The beloved prophet also said, there is no monasticism in Islam. And the prophet said, anyone who marries, he completes half his deen. Once during question and answer time, there was a person who asked me, that does it mean that if I marry twice, will I complete my full deen? What did the prophet mean when he said that marriage completes half your deen? Marriage prevents you from promiscuity, from fornication, from homosexuality. Only if you marry, do you have an opportunity to be a husband or a wife. Only if you marry, do you have an opportunity to be a father or mother, which are very important duties in Islam. So irrespective, whether you marry once or twice, you only complete half your deen. In Islam, for a marriage to solemnize, taking the permission of both would be husband and wife. The man and the woman is equally important. The Quran says in Surah Nisa, chapter number four, verse number 19, do not inherit the woman against their wishes. There's a hadith which is mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number seven, book of Nikah, chapter number 43, hadith number 5138. A lady by the name of Khansa bin Zakhadim al-Ansariya, she approached the Prophet and said that my father has married me to a person against my wishes. The Prophet he nullified the marriage. There's another Sahih hadith which is mentioned in Ahmad ibn Hanbal, hadith number 2469 where a lady approaches the Prophet and says that my parents have forced me to marry a man against my wishes. And the Prophet said she has the option of either continuing the marriage or nullifying the marriage. There's a similar hadith mentioned in Ibn Majah, hadith number 1875. It's the same hadith. A woman approaches the Prophet and tells her that my parents have forced me to marry against my wishes. And the Prophet says, you can either continue the marriage or you can nullify the marriage. And the woman says, I continued the marriage, but I wanted the woman to know that the parents cannot force their daughters to marry someone who they don't like. The Quran says in Surah Baqarah, chapter number two, verse number 228, that the women have rights similar to those against them on terms equitable, but the men have a degree of advantage. Based on this verse of the Quran, men and women are equal except in leadership. The Quran clearly says that the women have rights, those similar to them, on terms equitable, but the men have a degree of advantage. Now many of the Muslims, they misunderstand this ending phrase that the men have a degree of advantage and they think that men are superior. And they quote the verse of the Quran, 
that the men are superior to the women. So Allah has said, the men have degree of advantage, the men are superior. What they're quoting is the verse of the Quran which was recited by a wonderful Qari from Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 34, which says, Ar-Rijalu Kawamun Ala Nisa, that the men are the Kawam of the women. What is the meaning of the Arabic word Kawam? Kawam comes from the root word Akama, which means to stand up for. How we have Akama before Salah, we stand up for Salah. So this Arabic word Kawam means the men have one degree of additional responsibility and one degree additional service towards the women, not one degree of superiority to boss over the women. And if you read the tafsir of Tabari, he says the Arabic word Kawam means one degree of additional responsibility. Because if you read the verse ahead, the verse says that Allah has given men more strength than the women. So because of that advantage, it is the duty of the men that they should take care of the women, they should not boss over her. Furthermore, Quran says in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 19, that treat your wives with equity and kindness even if you dislike her. Means even if you don't like your wife, yet treat her with love and compassion. And treat her kindly, even if it is like her. Even if it is like her, treat her with kindness and compassion. And in Islam, we do not consider calling the women as housewives. Housewives. You know, housewife, if you analyze, means she's married to the house. In Islam, we don't consider our women, they're married to the house to be called housewives. You know, in English we have, what is their profession? Housewife. We in Islam prefer calling the women as homemakers because they make the home, they build the home. So inshallah, I believe that the ladies from now onwards, when they have to fill any form, instead of writing the profession, if they are not right housewife, that's English terminology. They are marrying you to your house. Prefer mentioning homemaker because the woman builds the home, they make the home. And in Islam, a woman is not married to a master to be treated like a slave. She's married to an equal, and the role is that of partnership. And Quran gives a very good phrase in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse 187, where Almighty God says, Hunna libasul lakum, wa antum libasul lahunna. That they are your garments, and you are the garments. That means your wives are your garments and you are the garments of your wives. What is the role of garment? The role of the garments is to beautify, to conceal, to protect. The husband and wife, they conceal each other's faults. They beautify each other. They help each other. It is the role of hand and glove. 